Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at the brand new ZBrush 2021 that has been released by the guys at Pixel Logic. Of course, we've talked about some of the features that is coming over to ZBrush 2021, but today we're going to take a very cool look at the new dynamic system and at the same time, we'll talk about the cloth sculpting brushes that are now included here and yes we will also talk about the micro pulley since these are the main things that a lot of people have been focusing on and it has actually caused a couple of controversy conversations you know with a lot of people saying that the brand new zbrush is actually intending to replace marvelous designer for most artists and of course most other persons are saying that the brush system and also the new dynamic system is more of a copy from blender which i totally do not agree but then let's get right into it so with zbrush 2021 open we have all of these here so we're gonna start off with something very simple so let's go all the way from here get a cylinder click drag that cylinder all the way out and we would you know set the floor right and rotate this to a point like that so with this here i'm going to make this a poly mesh 3d so we have that i don't like this math cap so let's change it to something like this cool now, if you're working with ZBrush at any point in time and you don't like your canvas looking this small, you can simply go all the way to this part. Let's double that canvas, click on yes, hit Ctrl and N to make a new one, click and drag, click right here to get things started. And of course, I'm going to go back one more time just to make sure I don't have this gradient and I would lose that right here. Cool. So with this here, you notice that we have a brand new menu right here and it is called dynamics. So if I click right here and just simply click, you notice we have the dynamic going on here. So what happens with this brand new dynamic menu? So if I select this and drag this all the way up, you'd notice we have gravity. We have certain things turned on. I'm going to turn off the on brush. We have the floor collision and we also have self collision. But if you look down here, you would notice we have a big button called run simulation. This is the button that excites me the most. So that's why I'm going to press it. So once you press that, there you go. Simulation easy. So you can undo, redo, do whatever you want. And you have this thing going for you. Now, this is just the very basic. But how do you cause collision? How does collision actually come in play? So if you want to get collision happening, if you go over to the sub tool, go over to append. Let's append something. What do we append right now? A terrain. So I think a terrain looks good. I'm going to select this terrain, drag this all the way up, scale this a bit and scale this in this direction. So by simply doing that, I'm also going to select that. And of course, because I have this terrain selected, if I also go through and click on run simulation, you see it runs all the way to the floor, but it doesn't cause collision. So how do we get collision happening? How you can get collision happening is by telling ZBrush that you would like any object that is currently not selected to be a collision object by making sure that they are visible. As far as they have the eye icon turned on, you can simply go over to collision volume and click. So once you click on collision volume, ZBrush should go ahead and merge every visible object and force them to become colliders. Now, the only object that it is not going to cause to become a collider is the object that is currently selected within the sub tool. So once we have that there, we can simply click on run sim and there you go. Pretty easy. So with this going on, what else can we do? What we can do now is we can actually force collision to happen based off what we want. So if you would like to play with any of these things, of course you can do that. But before we actually talk about any of those things that you can do, let's take a look at some of these parameters so that you guys can see how you can get started with it. So right here we have the on mask. You can click on the on mask and I'm just going to go all the way to this point, grab and select this part. And once I do that, because I have the on mask turned on, I can now easily, all right, I can now easily select this object, go over and select our transpose cloth brush, which is actually a new one. And of course there are certain new brushes. We're going to get to that and I can simply select it. So once I grab that and invert the selection, let's click right here to get this going right now. Once I have this mask, I can now move this and once i start moving this uh transpose line once i start moving the transpose you'd notice that the masked part starts following it so at this point you can use this maybe if you want to make a cape if you want to make some sort of confetti looking stuff or maybe you're trying to make some nice looking fold yes you can so at this point you have all of the creative liberty to do all of these things previously this might have been a bit of a hassle to make but right now you can easily make these things right here so let's just back up a bit and jump all the way back and with this right here one more thing which i would like to show you guys with the transpose brush before we actually start looking at something else is if i go ahead and turn off 
the on mask and select the move brush and let's go through and centralize that with everything going on i can now scale to a given point for this example if i scale within the x-axis i can cause the object to fold all right this is crazy so i can cause the object to fold i can cause the object to compress i can get some of those nice wrinkles and all of this stuff and yes of course if you want to get high detail looking stuff you can go in there and you know go over to the geometry and hit on the word subdivide subdivide to get this going but then instead of doing all of this you can simply hit on the dynamic subdivision make sure it's active and then you would have a much more smoother looking object you can increase the amount of smoothness that you want for your subdivision and at the same time with all of these things there you can still cause your simulation to happen and you can see how clean and easy you know it is for you to get these things going on and speaking about the dynamic subdivision this part has actually been revisited and yes it has been reworked for a couple of use cases so let's go down and bring this all the way to that point and if you look all the way down here you would notice we have a brand new micro poly so if i click on the brand new micro poly what does this do it has a couple of micro polygons that have been created by the guys of pixel logic that you can now use to create patterns and some cool effects directly on your model. So with this right here, if I go all the way and click on something like, let's say the radial 01, you would notice that it propagates that across and no, it is not an alpha, it is a mesh. And at the same time, once you have this going, you might be wondering, will this simulate? I mean, will it ever simulate? Yes, it will. So if I go through and start doing that, you can notice as well that the simulation, you know, is happening. And once you want to, you know, rotate this, you want to do anything you want, you can simply go through and get the transpose cloak brush and start working with it. If you don't want any of this, we can turn this off and yes, you have this going. And of course, you can go back and get the mesh that you're working with. So the next thing we're going to talk about is something that the guys of Pixel Logic has actually showcased. It is the fact that we have 13 brushes. Let's undo this and, you know, let's just back up this a bit cool so there are 13 brushes that you can work with minus the transpose cloth brush so if i go all the way here and tap the word c on the keyboard you would notice that we have a couple of brushes we have the cloth ball we have the cloth dimple you know we have the cloth wind oh let's try that so we have the cloth wind let's wind oh ooh. so you have the cloth wind you can simulate some sort of wind effect you also have a couple of them so if i also take a look at the notch yes you have the cloth notch and you can use this as well we also have something cool. Let's also go back here and tap C on the keyboard. We have the cloth move, we have the cloth hook brush. So the cloth hook brush is also something that you can work with. And the cloth hook brush can come in extremely handy for those who would like to create some sort of fold and you know, wrinkle things around. So let's talk about something very interesting that the guys at Pixel Logic has also done. So every single brush that you have now in ZBrush now supports dynamics okay so you can literally go over here and pick your clay build up brush and you can use dynamics alongside with it so how does this work so how this work is simple if you go over to the brush section go over to the section you have called elasticity and just in case you're looking for the brush this is the brush thing right here so if you go over to elasticity you can increase the simulation iteration so what happens now is once you start sculpting it's also going to have simulation attached to it so i can go in here and of course i can start sculpting and right now you would notice that we have that um simulation feeling going right in there and you can also notice that happening with our model so you can choose to get these and also work with it if you are looking for any other brush so let's go in there and find another brush let's see we can get the spiral brush for example and of course this is what the spiral brush looks like okay but then if i go in there and increase the simulation iteration and we start doing that you can notice that we have that simulation feeling or that simulation thing going on there so we can also do something like that and yes you can get this happening for you so once it has to do with dynamics simulation yeah you can now get these across all of the brushes that exist with zbrush and it just makes a lot of sense that this is something that the guys from pixel logic has also implemented so with this said let's also clean up what we have and let's take a look at something that was also teased so i'm going to get a plain 3d let's press f on the keyboard to frame in on that so once we have this going let's make this a poly mesh 3d and right over here i would also make sure that we have dynamics now within the dynamic section they have also implemented some 
other stuff so i'm going to increase the thickness of what we have so i'm just going to make thickness there and you can see that happening if we turn on the polygroup you can see the thickness and yes you can reconstruct this in case you need something that is lower so if i turn off the dynamics this is what we have if i turn it back on this is what we have so with all of these things here we've already talked about the micro poly that you can click on micro poly click right here and then you can you know simply get the micro poly to go around this but something that we also need to talk about let's turn this off something we need to talk about is the fact that within the dynamic section there are a couple of things that you can play with so you can choose to expand you can choose to you know inflate deflate you know and contrast so if i go in here and choose to inflate this i can play with whatever value i want and i can press the playback button and you can notice that it's inflating I'm also going to go ahead and stop that. Let's undo this. If I select, you know, expand, for example, turn off that and click, you can also notice that we're getting something like that. Now, this doesn't really make a lot of sense owing to the fact that we already have this right here and, you know, nothing is happening. So how do we get this to work? So for us to actually create some sort of expand or, you know, add or feed pressure into this object, what we need to do is to apply this stuff so i'm going to apply the dynamic subdivision and now with expand selected i would simply take this out take out gravity because we don't need that and because we don't want to expand we want to inflate i would go in there and run the simulation so once i run the simulation you can see that we have a very nicely looking pillow of course if you also want to play with this you want to get some uh, cool stuff happening yep you can you can also switch and pick on any of the brush so if we go over to you know cloth section pick any of the brushes here yep you can also use the brushes to get some pretty cool stuff you can run the simulation one more time if you want these to be affected by gravity you can click on gravity and then you can have that going if you don't want gravity to affect it make sure you have this one turned off if i also select this and we have this very nice looking stuff right here let's make our dynamic subdivision on i can go in there and select our transpose clothes and in real time once i start deforming this you can notice that we have this stuff going so i can get that going can rotate it around i can rotate this around so we can also raise this all the way up and make some rotation happening like this so depending on what you want to create this amazing tool is now here for your own use so if you're also thinking about what about you know stuff like this what if i would like to simulate directly on top of a model like this how does this work it works exactly the same way because this has multiple sub tools if we select these and go all the way to where we have as append and append uh you know a plane let's rotate across let's also scale this plane a bit for this i will select the default transpose and let's scale this tap x to lose the symmetry scale this and of course we're going to also rotate it so once we rotate this raise this all the way up we will tell zbrush one more time that we would like this stuff to have gravity okay and then we would like one and two which are the visible objects to have collisions so i'm going to click on collision volume and then you know run the simulation so once this is done we can run the simulation and you have something like that so at any point in time you make changes so let's say we select the head right here and we choose to scale this i would go in and you know turn off the eyes so if we take this all the way up and we make changes to the geometry the way it is and you now notice that we have this this stuff if we press the run button you would notice our simulation still remembers the previous place where you know we had the head but then once you get this going all you need to do is click on recalculate and it's going to recalculate every single object that you have that is visible within your sub tool and make them colliders so once you do that press on the run simulation button one more time and yes you would get this one going so this is a very neat and impressive feature that is now available for zbrush so just in case you're feeling excited about it you want to work with it you want to get started with it you want to test these things out you can simply go over to pixelogic.com and you know purchase or get zbrush and start working with it and for those who are working with marvelous designer this is going to be a bit of an addition to your tool set as you can simply get marvelous designer ready and then come over to zbrush and attach the micro poly and if you're thinking about how you can create your own micro poly it is quite simple so all you need to do is create a micro poly set and make sure that you can find them within your 3d mesh or 
you know within the quick peek now once you have that ready all you need to do is turn on micro poly hold down control on the keyboard click and then you can select it and so that's definitely about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend if you have questions about zbrush or you have questions about the brand new features and you want us to cover any of this topic please also put that in the comment section of course if you like this video you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace